Positioned between the bustling cities of Detroit, Michigan, and Windsor, Ontario, the Gordie Howe International Bridge is set to make history. Spanning across the vast waters of the Detroit River, this ambitious $6.4 billion project has been 20 years in the making. Despite initial delays, we stand at the brink of a major turning point for this extraordinary feat of human ingenuity, and it's hard not to be in awe of its sheer magnitude and impact on our world. But how did engineers overcome the challenges of constructing such an ambitious bridge that connects two nations? And what does this monumental achievement mean for the millions of people it will serve? The Detroit River has served as a vital transportation link between the United States and Canada since the time of the American Civil War, with ferries shuttling goods and people across its waters. As transportation needs grew, additional crossings were constructed. A rail tunnel opened in 1910. The Ambassador Bridge for vehicles started operating in 1929 and the Detroit-Windsor Tunnel for cars followed in 1930. The Ambassador Bridge became the busiest international crossing between the two nations, handling nearly one quarter of all truck traffic. However, it faced criticism over its private ownership by a billionaire, lack of maintenance, and monopoly status, since trucks could not use the tunnel. Both the bridge and tunnel lacked direct highway connections on the Canadian side, relying instead on city streets. In the early 2000s, government agencies from the US and Canada began studying the need for an additional future crossing over the Detroit River. This joint effort involved the US Federal Highway Administration, Transport Canada, the Ontario Ministry of Transportation, and the Michigan Department of Transportation. During its development phase, the project was known as the Detroit River International Crossing and the New International Trade Crossing. In 2004, the U.S. and Canadian federal governments officially announced plans to construct a new international border crossing linking Detroit and Windsor. Significant financial commitments began in 2013, when Canada allocated $25 million to acquire land on the Detroit side. Two years later, engineering firm Parsons Corporation was hired as the general consultant. Additional details emerged in February 2015 including Canada's plan to fund the construction of a $250 million customs plaza on the U.S. side in Detroit's Delray neighborhood to be paid for through future tolls. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security pledged $150 million up front and $50 million annually for operating costs. On May 14, 2015, at an event with Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper, the crossing was officially named the Gordie Howe International Bridge. This honored the legendary hockey player Gordie Howe, who spent 25 years with the Detroit Red Wings during his storied career. That same year, the Windsor-Detroit Bridge Authority began the procurement process to select a private consortium to design, build, finance, operate, and maintain the new bridge over 30 years after construction. This marked a major milestone as preparations ramped up for the large binational infrastructure project after over a decade of planning. Major milestones have been reached over the last few years in building this monumental cross-border project. The bridge towers, soaring an impressive 722 feet, were engineered to an exceptionally long 125-year service life, a rarity for bridge infrastructure. Despite climate change concerns, extending the lifespan was deemed feasible without excessive costs. On Canada Day 2020, the first concrete was poured for the tower footings, with over 7,600 cubic meters placed meticulously over six months. Tower leg construction ramped up in 2021, utilizing innovative techniques like cambered legs and temporary cross beams to counteract gravitational forces. The critical tie beam, crucial for distributing horizontal loads, was successfully installed and tensioned at ground level by July 2021. Lifting the inaugural deck segment on the Canadian side on March 29, 2022, marked a mammoth accomplishment given the harsh, corrosive conditions near the industrial Zug Island area. To combat corrosion, a specialized three-coat paint system designed to withstand 40 years in severe environments was applied. Another key juncture was reached on July 27, 2022, when the first steel anchor boxes, vital components for securing the suspension cables, were installed on the U.S. tower leg. But now, new milestones have been reached. An important juncture was reached on July 11, 2024, 
when temporary support beams were installed between the two separate bridge deck sections extending from Canada and the United States. This bridged the gap over the Detroit River, marking arguably the most significant visible milestone thus far in the construction of the Gordie Howe International Bridge. This is one of the most physically evident milestones for the project, stated David Henderson, CEO of Bridging North America, the contractor consortium building the bridge. With the placement of these temporary beams, the previously divided bridge decks are now separated by a mere 11 meters. It's akin to a backyard rink now, Henderson remarked, noting just this final segment remains before a continuous deck surface is achieved. As the bridge now technically constitutes an international border crossing, officials from the Canada Border Services Agency and U.S. Custom and Border Protection are on site to process worker documentation, just as they would at existing border crossings. Our team working in that international zone has to go through checkpoints, presenting their documents like normal border procedures, Henderson explained. While about a year of work remains on the bridge and surrounding border facilities, the finish line is finally in sight. There is still substantial work ahead on the Gordie Howe Bridge over the next 12 months. This includes adding railings, a multi-use path, electrical work, drainage systems, sensor instrumentation, and lighting installations. Despite the remaining tasks, bridging the two nations' deck sections truly signifies materializing what was once just plans on paper into concrete reality spanning an international border. For the project teams that have toiled for years on this endeavor, it marks an unforgettable turning point as the bridge takes on its final form. The Gordie Howe Bridge has an awesome cable-stayed design dreamed up by Chief Bridge Architect Eric Behrens from AECOM. On each side of the Detroit River, there is a massive A-shaped tower reaching up into the sky at 722 feet tall. Those huge towers use 216 cables to hold up the road deck running between them. With a main span stretching an incredible 2,800 feet across the river, it will be the longest main span of any cable-stayed bridge in North America. The total length of the bridge is a whopping 1.6 miles. At its highest point over the water, the bridge will soar 151 feet above the Detroit River below. It will have six lanes for cars and trucks to drive across, plus a cool path for people to walk or bike. On the U.S. side, there will be a massive 170-acre port of entry complex with inspection facilities and dedicated highway ramps connecting directly to Interstate 75. Not to be outdone, the Canadian side will have its 130-acre port of entry with inspection buildings, toll booths, and a maintenance facility. It will link up right to Highway 401 in Ontario. The walking and biking path will let people explore trails and bike lanes on both sides of the river. With vehicle traffic expected to increase from around 18,500 crossings per day in 2016 to 26,500 by 2025, the new Gordie Howe Bridge will provide a smooth flow for all those people and goods moving between the two countries. Transport Canada hired engineering firms Morrison Hirschfield, Davis Langdon, and Delcan to estimate costs for things like land, utility work, design, construction, operation, and maintenance on the Canadian side. The bridge is going to be a true work of art in itself. During construction, local artists have been decorating the huge concrete forms used to build the towers. Indigenous artists from Walpole Island and Caldwell First Nations did the art on the Canadian Tower, while Roberto Villalobos, an artist from Southwest Detroit, created the artwork on the U.S. Tower. There will be more amazing art installations once the bridge is finished. Sculptor Michael Belmore is making an 8.9-foot tall sculpture celebrating First Nations cultures. Another artist, Jordan Sook, is creating a commemoration of the Underground Railroad. A special artist will even design architectural lighting to make the bridge look spectacular at night. The project overseen by the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority is turning out to be pretty pricey though. They just announced the total construction cost has gone up from $5.7 billion to $6.4 billion. That extra $700 million is being covered by the Canadian federal government, which is financing the whole project up front. Not to worry though, they plan to make that money back through future tolls once the bridge opens. Speaking of the opening, the schedule has been pushed back a little bit too. 
The bridge authority says construction won't be fully complete until September 2025 now, instead of the previous November 2024 target. That means we likely won't see the first cars and trucks crossing the new Gordie Howe Bridge until sometime in the fall of 2025. Still, once it's finally open, this architectural and engineering marvel is going to make an awesome impression on anyone who lays eyes on it. The super tall towers, long sweeping cables, and striking aesthetic will make it a landmark bridging the two nations for generations to come. In keeping with modern sustainability practices, the Gordie Howe Bridge was designed for a remarkably long 125-year service life. This minimizes future construction impacts and resource usage. The bridge's pedestrian path and connections to trail networks will encourage low-carbon transportation like walking and biking across the international border. On an individual level, the new crossing will greatly improve cross-border travel commuters will benefit from reduced congestion and delays compared to the overcrowded existing crossings. Families and friends separated by the Detroit River will have a more enjoyable option for visiting loved ones. Travelers will appreciate the aesthetic beauty of the cable stayed design's elegant towers and sweeping cables. For border communities, the iconic bridge will instill civic pride as an impressive landmark connecting their homes to the world. Are you excited about this project? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Like this video and don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned for more.